So I'm no expert in bow saws. I made this one when I was about 17. I was reading Roy Underhill's book uh, and we, we bought it at a thrift store in Chapel Hill and uh, there was instructions for making a bow saw in there. So we made one and this is tulip poplar uh, that I split out of a log and a bow saw web. Back then you could buy bow saw webs from Highland Hardware and so this is this is one of those webs uh, and I made little dogwood pegs. This one broke so I made this out of an old piece of oak that was laying around the shop. It's really a mess but it cuts okay. Um, and there's been intense debate on how to use this thing. Do you put it in the vise and saw horizontally or do you clamp it on the bench and saw vertically? I've never seen any photos uh, to, of old people full sawing to, to tell me which way to go, at least with a big saw like this. Um, so, but I do find that this vertical works really well. Now it's really key that this web stays plumb. If you start changing the angle, uh, you, as you go around this curve of the back of the seat, you will start undercutting more and more and more, which um, is not, does not make your job any easier. So uh, to start the cut, I'm, gonna, I am actually going to change the angle a little bit so I can nibble at that corner a tad bit and get a little registration spot right in there uh, where I've started a curve. And then immediately I'm going to go vertical. Uh, and then uh, the old hair makers called this the, the Dancing Betty. Uh, it was one of their names for this saw because you can stand here and you go up and down all day long. Uh, whoops. I've got to clear a path for it. Um, and you can pretty much go right to your line. Um, I'm using this hand up at the top here to pull the saw slightly forward. Some of the saws have really long handles, but they are just for turning the web. They're not really a place to hang on so much. Uh, because I find that it tends to turn the web. You want to make sure your web is all in the same plane, that one side isn't cocked more than the other. Um, otherwise, you'll never be able to saw a straight line when it's cutting one way up here and another way down here. Um, and so you're just making sure the saw is going dead vertical the whole time and prancing around the outside of that seat. Oop, got off my line. So to fix that, uh, I really need to back up and kind of nibble at the curve, the side of the curve a little bit. So I'm putting pressure that way. Um, hello up there. And uh, trying to get that curve a little wider back over to where I was going. So the, the, the solution is not to keep cutting forward and try and cut over. It's rather to back up and then get it going where you want before you keep going forward. It's true on a bandsaw too. It's gonna get a little tenuous back here when I only got an eighth of an inch to saw off. Yeah, it's tough to do with the bow saw. Lost it. Curtis, you did this for the first few years of your career, is that right? Yeah, I did it for about 10 years. I probably made 500 chairs without a, without a bandsaw. And uh, I, um, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed the, the, I really enjoyed the bow saw. Oh, I see now why I'm not there. Okay, Seth, you gotta, you gotta let me in again. I'm sorry, my computer went off and I had to sign back in. And, uh, okay. Am I ready, Seth? Okay. There Let's we see. go. Okay. Sorry for my little mess up there, but 
clearly have trouble with these things. But yeah, I uh, uh, I didn't have a bandsaw for uh, for right at ten years, and yeah, I made one chair a week. So each week I'd saw out, I'd get out my bow saw, and uh, yeah, you know, you saw it. I was in about ten minutes. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And then when I did run across an old Delta bandsaw that I bought, I didn't buy it to saw the seats out. I bought it to, to cut off the maple billets to length that I was having to cut by hand. And But when it came time to carve another seat, I got down my bow saw and I realized I had a bandsaw and I looked over at it and I realized that now I would never saw out a seat with the bow saw again. The bandsaw had taken away that that really that that skill that i had and that pleasure and so it really kind of taught me something it was you know watch out what i bring in the shop it might have unintended circumstances which that one did 